Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you guys with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. Okay, happy Tuesday, everybody. First up, let's move through a few salient developments related to the ongoing U.S.-China technology war, specifically the semiconductor front. Hong Kong-based South China Morning Post reports that Wuhan-based YMTC, a memory chip maker Apple worked with until it was hit by U.S. sanctions, is making notable progress in making its most advanced memory chips without the need for foreign technology, which has now been restricted. The Hong Kong outlet writes that. YMTC had been on track to challenge memory chip leaders Samsung Electronics, SK Hynix, and Micron Technology with its flagship 232-layer X3 9070 3D NAND flash chip. But its prospects for mass production, quote, were thrown into doubt after U.S. equipment suppliers KLA and LAM Research had to halt sales and service to YMTC in compliance with Washington's updated export controls. End quote. The outlet cites unnamed industry sources as expressing that YMTC has doubled down on efforts to work with Chinese suppliers to help manufacture its X-Tracking 3.0 architecture-based chips, and quote, that progress has been made on a top-secret project. End quote. Another source expressed that the project intended to use Chinese equipment only, and that YMTC has placed big orders with domestic equipment suppliers. Now, whether these reports from the Hong Kong-based South China Morning Post are accurate characterizations or just noise is hard to say. We will need to continue watching the space closely. If it is true, however, it would be a big deal, suggesting that China can begin producing advanced chips earlier than experts had anticipated, and would frustrate Washington's efforts at retarding Chinese semiconductor ambitions. Though, of course, we also note the observation recently made by respected Hoover Institution historian Stephen Kotkin on the subject. That is, even if China catches up to the West's current technology sooner than expected, the West, of course, isn't standing still. For example, Dutch semiconductor company ASML is preparing to release in 2025 a 380 million US dollar per unit machine capable of etching delicate patterns on silicon wafers smaller than a virus. On the subject of U.S. technology restrictions, though, UK-based Financial Times reports that on the eve of the South Korean president's recent trip to Washington, the U.S. was requesting that South Korean semiconductor firms not fill any market gap in China if Beijing bans Idaho-based Micron from selling chips. Quote, what is the U.S. offering South Korea and or these firms in exchange for giving up potential business? How much pressure is the PRC putting on South Korea to not join the Dutch and the Japanese in the U.S.-led semiconductor controls? End quote. Meanwhile, and also on this theme, Germany is in talks to restrict the export of chemicals to China used in the manufacture of chips. While Germany does not have advanced chip-making technologies, German companies, specifically Merck and BASF, provide global firms with critical chemicals required for making semiconductors. U.S. financial media outlet Bloomberg writes that the proposal is part of a package of measures that Chancellor Schultz's government is discussing that would, quote, cut off China's access to goods and services needed for the production of advanced semiconductors, end quote. Next up, as the world sees massive shifts in energy markets and policy, China, too, continues to prioritize greater energy security. As the world's largest oil importer, Beijing recognizes its vulnerabilities to energy disruptions. Since the Ukraine war cut off from traditional trade partners, Russia has turned to Beijing as a market for its gas exports, and China has largely been happy to accommodate. 
This trade is only set to increase in the future too. Russia's energy ministry has now stated that the country is considering supplying natural gas to China by a pipeline from companies other than Kremlin-controlled Gazprom, which currently has the monopoly for Russian pipeline gas export. The 2,600 kilometer, 1,620 mile future Power of Siberia 2 pipeline, which would have the capacity of 50 billion cubic meters of gas per year, is being viewed by Moscow as a way to replace lost exports to Europe. We remember during General Secretary Xi Jinping's controversial trip to Moscow earlier this year, the topic of this gas trade was discussed between him and Putin. At the time, we also observed that Beijing was in a better bargaining position than Russia. China is in far greater need to secure oil imports than gas. Indeed, China's current gas supply should be sufficient for at least five to seven more years via the Power of Siberia 1 pipeline which currently transports over 15 billion cubic meters of gas a year to China and is expected to lift to over 20 billion cubic meters this year. Also, last week an analyst from the Moscow-based Energy Research Institute admitted that the power of Siberia 1 is still not profitable and is not expected to be profitable until the middle of the next decade. Nearly one year into it, we now know that Europe is resetting its energy policy. An entire continent has had to figure out what to do now that Russia's pipelines are no longer supplied with natural gas. The second largest economic power in the world, the Eurozone, is rebuilding its entire energy supply chain and sources of natural gas. These seismic shifts in global energy have forced Beijing to prioritize its own vulnerable energy security. All these energy developments, from Europe to Russia to China, are creating new trends in global markets presenting challenges to policymakers and private individuals alike, but also great opportunities for savvy investors. And today's video sponsor, MCF Energy, is giving investors an opportunity to take advantage of these historic geopolitical and market shifts. MCF Energy could be a natural gas dominator in continental Europe because of one critical factor its first mover advantage. MCF Energy is the first new public venture consolidating giant gas prospects in Europe since the outbreak of the Ukraine war. The company boasts a renowned leadership team with a strong record in European energy and capital markets. Its team of executives have incorporated and sold successful energy companies, including to ExxonMobil, totaling 2.6 billion US dollars. CEO James Hill grew Europe's largest oil field by 40 times and has led massive exploration campaigns in six countries. Lead advisor Ford Nicholson spent decades developing oil and gas, selling two of his companies for a combined 4.2 billion. He says MCF Energy is, quote, the biggest opportunity of my career, end quote. MCF Energy has strong institutional backing with existing large-scale Austrian and German prospects, as well as additional frontiers under evaluation. MCF shares have recently entered the market and could make an excellent addition to any well-diversified investment portfolio looking to take advantage of what some say are the biggest disruptions to the world's energy markets in a 100 years. So, check out MCF Energy for this once in a generation opportunity. We remember that all investment involves risk. Speak to an investment professional if need be before making any large investment. A big thank you to MCF Energy for sponsoring this episode of China Update. Now, continuing with Chinese energy policy and developments, the world's second largest economy is also turning back to nuclear power. Since 2016, China's approvals for nuclear power plants had been largely stalled. Indeed, between 2016 and 2018, Beijing didn't authorize any new projects. According to a report by Gorsun Securities, this was largely due to strong public opinion against the energy source after the 2011 Fukushima nuclear disaster in Japan. However, as Chinese financial media outlet Tai Sin writes, quote, in the context of the clean energy transition, power supply shortages, and demand for infrastructure investment amid slower economic growth, nuclear energy development has gained renewed attention. End quote. In late 2022, a report released by the 20th National Party Congress called for, quote, 
the active, safe and orderly development of nuclear power. End quote. Last week, a new report published by the China Nuclear Energy Association showed that in 2022, China approved 10 new nuclear power units, the most since 2008. The report also said that construction is underway on 24 units with total capacity of about 26.81 million kilowatts. Adding, quote, by 2030, China is expected to surpass the United States and become the world's largest nuclear power plant operator, end quote. China's nuclear power generation is now once again growing quickly, though it only represents 4.7 percent of the country's total electricity, less than half the world's average of 10 percent. The China Nuclear Energy Association predicts that China will reach this rate by 2035, and then reach 17.5 percent by 2060, quote, catching up with the levels of developed countries, end quote, though this projection assumes highly optimistic growth forecasts. Regardless, however, what is clear is that going forward, China is going to see an explosion in the construction of nuclear power plants. By the way, for those of you who are currently angrily messaging me in the comments that it is pronounced nuclear, not nuclear, you can save your efforts. I am perfectly aware that most people say it nuclear, but where I grew up, it is said nuclear. So I will continue to say it the way in which I was raised. I hope you will forgive my exotic accent. Okay, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. And I will see you all tomorrow.